Heroes live forever. More than 12 years after Fond du Lac police officer Craig Burkholz was gunned down in the light of duty, we hear from those closest to him opening up for the very first time about the tragic day and the impact of his death on law enforcement across Wisconsin. In tonight's First Alert exclusive, Holly Brantley spoke to the officers who responded alongside him in 2011. Retired police officer David Raditz reflecting on a day that forever changed his community. Moments from beginning his shift, he heard a situation unfolding over the police radio. Shots fired, officer down, and I'm in the middle of getting my duty belt ready, and I'm in the briefing room, and I yelled back to the shift commander's office, where are they at, where are they at? He headed to South Lincoln Avenue. Command of 5-3, uh, it should go at your option. Our cameras were there, officers facing what they call, quote, a sniper situation, something that escalated to the point they say few will see in their careers. I grab my flashlight and I reach over because the rifle is in between the two front seats. And as I do that, my driver's side window just blows up in my face. Police moved in after a woman showed up at the police station reporting a sexual assault. She feared a little girl was still in the home with the suspect. I asked him repeatedly where the girl was, and he swore at me and told me that you're not getting her. Retired Captain John Gutzman was also on scene. You see Gutzman and other officers here running to Winnebago County's armored vehicle and racing to get a female inside. He says police later learned the man spraying bullets was James Cruxon, an Army veteran, reportedly suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. Cruxon's bullets would hit and kill another Army veteran, Officer Craig Burkholz, struck down as he ran to the scene to help his fellow officers. Officer Ryan Williams was also shot. Shot. I re remember distinctly thinking this is this is not going to end anytime soon. This is not going to end in the way we would like it to, to end. Cruxon eventually took his own life. Raditz so. thankful so, he survived. So for me, it was literally the grace of God and literally two inches. Then the shock. Craig didn't make it. Uh, the first year, like everyone says in their story, you're pretty numb. Many on scene suffer from survivor's guilt, like retired oh. Lieutenant Ed oh. Wenzel. But I still feel guilty about it because it should have been me, not him. Raditz remembers the days that followed going through the motions and when emotions overflowed. I knew this day was coming. I didn't know when. I, I just didn't. But I remember I'm at work one day. I'm on Johnson Street driving eastbound at National Avenue. And I just started crying like a baby. And I couldn't stop it. He says as a department, they needed to find a way to heal. One way through an organization called COPS, or Concerns of Police Survivors. They had a co-workers retreat that was coming up. So six of us, including Ed, jumped in a minivan. Up until then, we were all, and some of us, were victims of that day. Raditz is now on COPS board. I'm the guy who talks to the department after the fact. I'm the co-worker who understands and knows what you're going through. Why? Because I've been there and I lived through it. Gutzman says to move the department forward, he had to analyze that tragic warning, eventually reformulating the department's training. We need to prepare our people, um, you know, for for that, let them know that they have the skills to do that. Make sure that the training is up to date. Current Assistant Chief Jason Lairdon says it wasn't just training. An armored vehicle known as a Bearcat was donated to the department. Unfortunately, on a pretty regular basis, um, anytime there's a type of a call. Lieutenant Ryan Williams, who was also shot, takes comfort in all the positive changes over the past 12 years. The reason I survived was I put on an extra ballistic tactical vest. That was not commonplace before this. Now, if you go to it, you can't find a department where you don't have an extra ballistic tactical vest. Lieutenant Williams now shares his story to all who will listen and also Burkholz, a legacy foreshadowed in words he can still hear Craig say. When we talk about Craig and his story, uh, the one thing that people bring up is his saying is a uh, stay safe, stay strong, stay positive. The reason I'm speaking to you right now is because I live by those words. In Fond du Lac, Holly Brantley, Action 2 News. Tomorrow on Action 2 News at 10, hear from Craig's parents, Bill and Gay Burkholz, speaking out for the first time about their son's death and what's helped them move forward. You can find links to learn more about the COPS organization at WBAY.com.